What's up, y'all? This is your boy Isaiah, and this is another episode of Let Me Tell You Something here on the Dub Network, y'all. Listen up. I got my guy with me, okay? My ride or die, Nate Dog. Nate Newton is in the building, but he is not in physically in the building. He is on the road. Nate Dog, where you at, man? Right now, man, I just went past El Paso looking at some beautiful mountains in Texas, man. I ain't no Texas had this many mountains, bro, coming out of El Paso. Coming towards Dallas, man. I'm I'm rolling, man. I left uh yesterday around about three o'clock uh Pacific time and got me a little street last night, right past uh Arizona, got in Phoenix by the east of Phoenix, laid back in the truck, man, and well the van, got me about three, four hours of sleep and just been rolling ever since. See? Man, so let me help everybody understand exactly where where you're coming from and why you're on the road. So, y'all, Nate has been at training camp over in Oxnard, California. I actually just got back. I was with him this past week. We did a lot of a lot of on air work together. But one of the things we had opportunity to do was obviously sit back and watch practice. You know, we were able to see the Dallas Cowboys right front and center. We understand that a lot of our listeners are here local in the Dallas Metroplex. So we're gonna make sure that we give you guys a peek behind the veil in terms of what we were able to see with our little spark on the eye um with our with our boots on the ground so we're gonna go first of all nate overall overarching how should dallas nick dallas cowboy nation be feeling about this season uh you know overall they should feel pretty good because out of the three things we do have one thing that's dominant and that's our defense i think our defense is intact I'm sorry, what was that? Nate, Nate, did, did you just say that the defense is going to be more dominant than the offense for the Dallas Cowboys? Is that, is that what I just heard you say? I, I really think that, Isaiah. I think that we both saw that repeatedly in the two or three padded practice. We saw that our, the defense should be uh, more than adequate. I mean, it's been about seven, eight, maybe nine years since we had a defense that we felt real good about going into during. And I think when we finish training camp, we'll feel good about them. The offense has so many questions, and I think we'll go over that as, as time goes on. We got so many, and we don't have a kicker. So if you don't have a kicker, I don't think you have great special teams. Yeah, I have to agree with you 100% on that. I know every time the kicking crew went out there, I know we kind of held our breath and shook our head at the same time. It's not an area of comfort right now for the Dallas Cowboys. But I heard some rumors, Nate, that they are trying to address it by bringing in some former uh, Dallas Cowboys kickers. We're going to see what that looks like going into these first, this first week of the preseason. But um, how, how was your, first of all, your perspective, Nate, in terms of – the training camp format. I know we a couple episodes ago we talked about you know how how this NFL is now as you classified soft, and I I doubled down on that and said that this this NFL is soft, not necessarily by at the fault of the players, but just by the the parameters that have been set forth, and you know obviously player safety and all those things. It's not the same game nor the same training format that we grew up playing in, but give everybody an understanding of how different things are from what you just saw at camp from when you were in camp? Even from last year, Isaiah, coming into camp, they had three days last year to get acclimated. And then they put on pads for two days and then one day off. This year here, it was four days of acclimation before they got into pads. And now it's two, two padded days, one day off. I mean, they, they well, not off. They literally have, have a, a glorified walkthrough. They call them box games. It, it, it's, it's so different. Uh, when, when a guy get hurt, it's really a freak accident out there it's because yeah. they're not hitting and taking to the ground. They're just thudding up. They're coming up, wrapping up in most cases. Or either they coming up, just tapping the guy on his rear end while he runs by. So uh, it, it is so different. But the, the great thing about it, is the league is consistent across the board yeah. that uh, the, the padded practice that you can have, the time of uh, that you can have players. I think you can have the, the veterans 10 to 11 hours per day of practice. And, the, and I think you can have the rookies an extra hour after that. Mm. So, you know, that's, it's, it's consistent around the league, though, I feel. No, it's consistent, man. But, you know, here on Let Me Tell You Something, that, you know, we got to keep it real. We got to keep it 100 with the people. <laughs> and the, these padded these padded helmets, Nate, these 
These doggone padded helmets. I don't know if we're at a, at a bouncy house, if you're at a trampoline park, whatever it might be. I feel, <laughs> I feel like, the, I feel like the guys are at American Gladiator about to do the joist or something like that. I'm not sure what's going on, but I was reading up some, I'm reading out some articles in terms. That I'm sure everybody's been seeing. You know, pretty much everybody's been wearing these padded helmets. It's it's literally the helmet that they typically wear in the game and practice, and then they have these pads on, right. and. It's almost like the insert that goes in the helmet. They just put it on the outside. And what the stats say is it says if one person out of the two people that are making contact is wearing the padded helmet, then it's a 10% reduction in head trauma. Now, they double down and say if both people are wearing it, it cuts down 20% on head trauma. So if my question is, if, if that is a true statement and they are so adamant that, that, that that's real and that that's going to cut back on head injuries – and if they're so concerned about the player's safety, then why isn't that being enacted into the actual game? Why is it just practice if you're saying that 20% of the head injuries go down? Why is it just practice? Why, like? let, let me cut you off here. I said, why are you trying to enforce something for these dudes to be looking like the great kazoo out uh, there in Fred Flintstone? <laughs> why? You don't. That is that is ugly. It's ugly. And, and you know what? They may have cut down on trauma, but but how much hitting are they doing yeah. with their heads in practice? Yeah. You know, and I'm going to tell you another thing. When you put on those those head gears like that, especially with offensive and defensive linemen, and you're trying not to hit head, your pad level comes up anywhere from four to six inches. Mm. So a lot of guys are almost standing straight up, not trying to uh, get their head in the proper place, not getting their hands in the proper place. So if you're not careful, you're going to go into games and, and you're not going to be physical. And that is one of the things we're hoping the Cowboys will be this year as a physical team. That's a good point. I know some of the rebuttals that I've been hearing around the league as I've been researching and looking at some of the players' comments in regards to these helmets is some. a lot of guys feel like it's a joke. Uh, some guys are being very political and saying, oh, you know, we just have to do what the league says. But there are other guys that are speaking out saying, you know, the, the potential downsides to wearing these helmets, you know, these padded helmets. And they're saying that for the same reasons that you just touched on, if I'm not utilizing my head in practice, in your entire life you're to, you're told to strike with the crown with the four you know four right. head, and you know the, the the helmets are created for that. If you're not making that contact in practice and in training camp, but then you remove those pads and you're now expected to do that in the game, aren't you setting guys up for failure in the sense of potential injuries that they if they were going to sustain them they would sustain them early on in, in camp your neck has to get acclimated to that type of contact and by having these pads and by not allowing that contact now guys are not going to be their bodies won't be accustomed to that contact until you are going full speed ahead and when the games matter so a lot of guys are concerned that there's actually going to be more injuries more head injuries more neck injuries when the season approaches simply because of this the stance that the NFL is taking. Well, I don't know, Isaiah. Them things, if you pick up one of them helmets with the pads on it, them things Heavy. weigh about five or ten extra pounds. <laughs> so the guys next will be getting built up, man. I don't know about that. You know, everything, our bodies are not designed for the, the tortures that we take it through. Mm. That's number one. But you do have to have that acclimation pro process that they telling us that they do before they put on pads. You have to, your body has to get used to being hit. And and if you don't get your body used to getting hit somehow, some way, in these difficult situations, yes, it can be trauma when you go from zero to 100 miles an hour on opening day. Yeah, You go from literally zero to 100 miles an hour. And I think the great thing about it is that the Cowboys are going to have some some uh some uh practices against other teams before they get into this. Yeah, that's that's definitely the good news. Speaking of contact, it's talking about physicality. You already mentioned that this defense is looking to be the the really the star of the show going into this season, and I would have to agree with you. This defense is looking very strong, especially defensive line. The physicality of this defense that we saw it in practice, Nate. You and I were both sitting there watching it. We had plenty of conversations regarding it. This defensive line specifically. Let's go ahead and hit on the D line. Yes. What has happened to this defensive front over the past two seasons? Two years ago, the Dallas Cowboys, they went out and they picked up Don Terry Poe, and they've been picked up Everson Griffin. Both turned out not to be great additions. Griffin ended up getting released late, and Don Terry Poe got released in the middle of the season. 
how has this defense turned it all the way around to the point now where I think we talked about on one of the Cowboys broadcasts that there's 12 very viable, uh, very viable players at the defensive line position when last year, you, I mean, come two years ago, you can only find two. Yes, I agree with you. Uh, what coach, uh, what coach has done, you know, coach Quinn has done is he's went out and been specific in what he wanted. I talked to him last year doing, um, doing training camp and he was specific about guys like Quentin Bohannon, uh, Neva, Neva Gallimore. Uh, he was just, you know, this is how they fit. Nate, this is what I need for them to do. And, and, and it took a year. You know, it, it's still in jail like we wanted to up front because guys got hurt. You know, Gallimore got hurt. Quint, uh, Bohannon was young. Mm -hmm. But these guys are maturing, and now they're in their second year. So now the competition is fierce. Yeah. You know, you got Basham. You got um, you got Big Ridge way up out of uh, Arkansas. Ooh, I like you it, got mate. guys that are really competing for positions. I'm talking about the inside guys. I'm just mentioning the inside guys. And, and – it's gonna be uh, uh, Osa. He's mm. the lead, he's the leader of the pack. Mm. You can see where he's matured, uh, not only on the field, but I've interviewed him, and his conversation is a grown man conversation out there. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm looking at the depth chart right now, and it, and you, it, Dalboy, Cowboys Nation, y'all should feel very confident about this defensive front, but they have got a lot to contend with. The whole NFC East seemingly has stepped up their game in terms of defensive yeah. fronts, and I'm not sure. I, I, I'll bring it up later, but there's the there's a team out in Philadelphia. And I know most people don't want to hear that. They they did. <laughs> there was a video that came out the other day. That came out yesterday, matter of fact, um, uh, two days, two, a couple days ago, it came out, and it was a uh, big what's his name over there, big Jordan Davis. The, the, yeah. draft, the draft pick out of Georgia, he was driving back. I can't tell if it was Jason Kelsey, the starting center for Philadelphia, or if it was somebody else. It really didn't matter. But he was driving this guy back like he was a doggone root hog. It was embarrassing <laughs> and scary at the same time. So as you talk about the Dallas Cowboys defensive front, they're not the only ones that have some goons out there. And we obviously will get to the offensive line and their ability to handle some of these threats that are present in the NFC East. But Overall, this Dallas Cowboys defensive front looks good. Now, as we look towards yeah. the, the the next level, okay, the next level at the linebacker position, there was an addition, Nate. The Cowboys went out and they added some more depth at that at that level simply because of the fact Jabril Cox had an early injury in camp. He bumped his knee, tweaked his knee, whatever they said it was, coming off of that ACL surgery. So that didn't give them a boat of confidence, and it made it more of a reality that, hey, we might need to add some more depth behind Cox, behind uh, uh, Gifford um, and, and Parsons and Vander Esch. We might need to have another guy out there. And they didn't just go out there and get a guy, Nate. They went out there and got a dude. And then, yes, sir. They, that, went out and, they went out and got a bulldog, man. Yeah. After the bar, I mean, <clears throat> I was talking to Coach uh, George Edwards, man, and, uh, he, and I, you know, some of the questions we were ask, asking of him, like, hey, are, are, is he a starter? He said, can be. Yeah, but he's here to uh, to fill in where he's needed. We need him in the locker room. And you always like to say he has a C on his chest. Yes, that means he, he's he's been a captain. He's been a leader. He's been a guy that you know that in in high intense situations he can calm the locker room or he can calm his guys or he can pull his guys up. Remember last year after the after the uh, San Francisco game, coach. Coach McCarthy say his guys wasn't ready. They had a shocked look. Mm -hmm. Well, that is why you go out and get an Anthony Barr. That is why you go out and get this guy because he won't have that shock look. He'll he'll be able to lead guys into the into the battle. Yeah, I like that. I I did get a little bit of word from inside the organization that when you have a talent such as my Micah Parsons who had such right. a successful rookie, uh, rookie season and somebody who was getting, you know, high accolades and, you know, everybody's praising him for all the great things that he did his rookie season. And now he's coming into his second year. Do you think that this Anthony Barr signing, as much as, as it was for depth um, at that position, do you think it was more so from the leadership perspective in terms of having Micah have somebody to look up to so that he's not right, yeah. you know, riding high on Aladdin's carpet? You, you know what, man? Uh, you know, I, I look back at Lawrence Taylor, man, uh -huh. and I played against him a lot of years, a lot of years, two or three, 
in his glory days. And he was he was riding high like that. But you know, they had I think Harry Carson, guys like that still around. Guys that can say, Hey, young pup, settle down. You the man. We ain't trying to take your throne, but we just trying to make sure you rule it right. Yeah. That you rule over the courtyard right. And that's that's all Anthony Barr is gonna do. Help this guy, along with Coach Edwards, help this guy stay settled, stay locked in. And, you know, Parsons has been walking around with a grimace on his face mm. the whole camp. So I don't think he's satisfied. And now bringing in Anthony Barr. But you know what? That's not only – Anthony Barr is going to help Leighton Vanderesh tremendously. He's going to help Luke Griffin. I was talking to the coach uh, Edwards. He was talking about, man, Luke Griffin is, is really pushing hard to be a better player. His body is different. He's For once, he's been healthy from day one all the way to now because he usually don't even make it through uh, OCA. So he's going to help the room. Yeah. And then the young kid from LSU, you know, who, who retweaked his knee, yeah, I, I think that box. was a little bit more serious than people thought, man. Yeah, I think so, Because too. he hasn't been back to a back-to-back practice yet. You notice that? Yeah, I noticed He hasn't it, been man. back to a back-to-back practice yeah, and you yet. See, you can see how he's moving around, too, when he's been doing his uh, his treatment on the side. He doesn't look like somebody who's ready to go out there and start right. hitting some people. So I think, right. I think that that injury might be a little bit more than they're letting it on to be. Um, but either way, they were able to go out there and get a very favorable deal um, in the forms of grabbing Anthony Barr. He had been receiving 10 to $12 million for the most part over the past few years, and then they were able to go get him for a $2 million base, I believe up to three million dollars with incentives so that is a complete absolute steal for the dallas cowboys and nate he's ginormous this yeah he's ginormous now this linebacker core is not small by any means michael parson if if you if you go ahead and place anthony Barr as a starter let's go ahead and throw him in there as a starter because i think that's where he'll end up being after he gets through off the pup and gets acclimated back ready to play again Micah Parsons would be the smallest linebacker that you have at on, at, the right. start, at the starting starting position. And he is 6'3", wow. 245. Right, right. 6'3", 245 is your smallest, and he runs a 4'3", 6". Next up would be uh, Leighton Van Der Esch at 6'4", 250. Right. Then you go to Anthony wow. Barr, who's 6'5", 255, maybe plus. <clears throat> Mm. What does that do? Tell the people as an offensive lineman, <laughs> getting once you get past the defensive line, when you work up to that that's next level, and that's past. if you get past that's this if defensive you line, get past, <laughs> then you go see the thing that linebackers like when they coming off the rock, especially if they can use their hands well, is they like to the good linebackers like to come downhill. So when you got a, a Bohan and you got a, a Gallimore, and you and you coming off and you're not square. You're gonna get punished. Mm. You're gonna get ran over. That's when the holding calls uh, get called because you're out of position. You're not down low because you're wearing these big bubble helmets. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, you don't want to face another lineman. That those are potential defensive ends. Yeah. That you're facing. All three of these guys are defensive end size guys that can all run a uh, four seven or less. Jeez. That, that that's ugly, man. Yeah. That's ugly. That's not a good thing. No, it's, it's a great thing for Cowboys Nation. It's a terrible thing for opposing offenses. And I think the Dallas Cowboys right. fan base would be perfectly fine with that. Now, behind, as you get behind those guys, Nate, you're going to the safety position. And this seems to be something that's very competitive right now. You got you got Big Wilson, uh, said Wilson back there. Uh, you also have uh, J. Ron Curse. And then you also have, who am I missing real quick? Da, 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 da. Uh, Malik Hooker. You got okay. Yeah, Malik Hooker. Malik Hooker, okay. So you got Curse, Hooker, uh, and Donovan Wilson. Not Cedric Wilson. My apologies. Ced is gone. Um, Donovan Wilson. So how are you feeling? And they've, they've been using these three safety looks. I'm not necessarily a fan of that. I'm a fan of Dan Quinn, and, but I'm not a fan of this three safety set simply because of the fact that it leaves so much vacancy in the middle. However, I do understand the versatility that it gives for J. Ron to be able to walk himself down into the box and insert himself as a linebacker. But – there's another cat that has came into the fold that everybody's starting to talk about, and that's that Marquise Bell, and they like this guy, number 41. What have you seen yeah. out of out of him? I know he's a, he's a he's a thick cat too. He's not a little dude by any means. He's just a big guy that can run. He'll get physical with linemen. He'll get physical with the receivers. But you know, uh, I, I just like to reserve myself. Now we and we forgetting about is his name Israel Israel McQuamie. Uh, 
Yeah, Israel McQuarrie. You know, we we forgot him. See those those are guys along with with Wilson, who are either young. I didn't I didn't play last year. And, and so and Israel's these young guys. Israel is one of my favorites coming out of the OTAs last year, Nate. He, because simply right, because of the right. fact that he's so tall. I think he's around six four, six five, somewhere. I think six four. Um, and he's lanky. He used to be a cornerback, so he has really good footwork. But what happened when he got to the preseason game is he didn't want to hit nobody, Nate. He didn't want to hit yeah, nobody. I know. And you and you can't this isn't two hand touch. You know, so that was one element of his. Game. <laughs> that was one element of his game because I was I was a big fan. I was I was had to had the flag and everything. I was in the leading of his fan base, and when it came time to hit somebody, he backed off, man. So I I'm looking forward to see if he has made that change in his game because Mature, if he has, man. yeah, you know, got some dog and got that poodle out of him. He got some pit bull in him. Man. <laughs> We're gonna yeah, see, yeah, because that's what they say about Marquise Bell. He all bulldog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 So okay. So, so I, it's nice. The safety situation is nice. Young, are, young are semi old because all of these guys are young. Mm. Now g- give people now as we work from the safeties all the way down to the outside. Now the cornerback position. Obviously, everybody's aware of Trayvon Diggs. You know, tying up your your former right. teammate with a with a Everson Walls with eleven interceptions this most recent season. Um, so they should feel good about him. A lot of people felt good about him until they saw something pop up on Twitter. Nate, there was a little video that popped up of Simi Fajoko right. running a post route on one on ones against against Trayvon. Are people looking too much into that man, or or how how should they feel about about Simi Fajoko beating Trayvon Diggs? You, you, we we both know it normally it's a safety somewhere in the middle of the field. Absolutely. You know, that you go four across. You know, you cover him four across, and you got to cover the whole field. Yep. I, I, you know, I'm more worried about his state of mind mm. you know is how did he feel about it and the coach had to correct him like look here bro Ooh. calm down i mean you're talking about the al harris that thing touch you so much mm. he let it touch him so much that he took it off the post yeah i heard he, what, I heard he deleted on, his man. whole i heard he deleted his whole twitter nate yeah don't do that man don't don't show people that people can get in your head Facts. you you bigger than that the challenge is bigger than that mm. You know, so I, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm like this, man. If you had 11 interceptions last year, uh, teams are truly not scared of him. But now is your year to show people those 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 11 interceptions were the joke. You are gonna fear throwing at me this year? What is what and is so that? You got to work on your craft. What does that mean for you to have 11 interceptions and the league still isn't scared to throw the throw your way? What what? How should he it, interpret that? He's Vegas, man. He's Las Vegas, baby. Ooh. You know, you 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 know, you rolling them dice. I mean, <laughs> and, and I'm telling you, roll you at the crap table, man. So uh we saw it towards the end of the year a couple of times he got he got had, you know, because he, he was jumping routes and doing things and so now this year here you gotta take it to another level. Study film a little bit better, mm-hmm. study tendencies a little bit better. You know, cover a little bit better. So yeah. he he got a lot of room to grow. Man, I looked at him yesterday. He ain't no little guy. No, he's not. He's not. No, he's yeah. not a little guy, man. And he has some help out there. Anthony Brown's having an extremely good, uh, good camp, um, as well as Jordan Lewis. Oh, hold on, let me stop you on that, man. Uh oh. Because I, I I'm tired of kissing the defense tail. Is it because we don't have receivers? Ooh, we gonna get there, Anthony Nate. Brown. We gonna get there, huh? Nate. We almost there. <laughs> We almost there. Okay. <laughs> okay. But I mean, those guys both backed their game up last year. Jordan Lewis and Anthony Brown, both of those guys are getting paid yeah. from four to five million dollars. And a lot of people right. felt like they shouldn't be, they sh- weren't playing well enough to receive that. And I think they both backed that up uh, with a great uh, campaign last year, obviously supporting Diggs. Right. Um, and they earned that check. And now they're back again. And I think that they're the, that's going to be your starting three cornerbacks, Anthony Brown, Jordan Lewis, Trayvon Diggs. I don't think that's going to change. Right. I don't think that okay. that your, your boy, Boss Man Fat, is going to change that, that <laughs> change that depth yeah. chart. What? I'm, I'm gonna tell you something, man. Man, please tell me something. This kid need to get back to being himself. Mm. I know things went haywire off the field, and I know it can affect you as a human being, and as a young man. But you got to get back to being. Let that football be the escape route. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. what I would do. I would just turn this thing into you draft them in the second round. I told you rapping was second to what I to to the love of, of the game. 
go out and show them. Right now, everybody thinking rapping is the, the thing that you do and not football. Yeah, uh, boss man fat. Uh, when you say yeah. he needs to get back to being himself, Nate, is he not himself right now? Because people didn't see a lot of him last year. So what what is what exactly does his does himself mean? I, I think coming out of Kentucky, he was a little more boisterous. He was uh, uh, a little more uh, into his thing, doing his own thing. Sometimes guys take a minute to, to try to understand this the NFL game. Cause, you know, I mean, I look at you, Isaiah. You weren't a little dude. And these guys and receivers out there, they ain't a little dude. Yeah, I mean, I know the SEC is a big big league, but it still ain't the NFL. Yes. So maybe he's adjusting okay. and he needs to hurry up and he needs to be a, a core member of all special teams. Ooh, he say it again. show the coaches that he, that he hungry. Say it again. Special teams, man. Yeah. Second, yeah. second round pick last year, but you still have to make contributions on special teams. I don't give a dog. Yeah. If you're not, if you're not out there starting at your particular position, you have to be a core special teams player. Otherwise it's going to be hard to justify keeping you around regardless of, of where you were drafted at the previous year. So right. he, he has some work to do. And I, one of the guys that's pushing him right now is one of the guys that I love, and that's Nashawn Wright. Nashawn Wright's a big boy corner. He's sitting out there towering over everybody that steps up to him. He has those long arms like Dawson off a of street fighter. He can throw him out there and get him on you. Uh, he's, some, he's, a, he's a player that I think... 6'4", 190. Yeah, 6'4", all of 190. 23, <laughs> second-year player out of Oregon State. Mm. We got him in what? We drafted him in the third round. Third round, yep. Yep. Yeah, I like yeah, him. and you know, and Coach Quinn thought he was a steal at last yes. year. That, that a lot of people don't like that pick, and even this year they don't like that pick. But he's out there doing his thing, man. Let me say right quick, like I said before, you move on. They got two practices against Denver. Okay, the veterans gonna get a lot of this work because I think they're gonna try to adopt the Rams' way of doing things. Mm. The veterans gonna get a lot of work, and these. These rookies going and, and second year players gonna see a lot of them games. Got you. I mean, is Nation? What, what do you see? Is he is he like that? Or is he just still developing? I think he's still developing, but I think that he's ahead of right. Kelvin Joseph. I, I do believe yeah. that. I, I think that even though Kelvin Joseph was drafted ahead of him, that Nation is the more versatile player, and he's the person who's gonna add more value to your team. One thing that we heard this past weekend, you really got to pay attention. I know you do, Nate, um, but Cowboys right. Nation really has to pay attention to these quotes that come across from coaches. As, as, political, right. as politically correct as PC as most of these coaches are in these interviews, there's little nuggets that you could take away. When you hear about yeah. Kelvin Joseph, they, they say, oh, we like you know what he brings. Um, you know, he's, he's starting to make some plays. When you hear them talk about Nation Wright, they say, man, he's a core special teamer. He's somebody that we know that we, that we love to have out there. You know, he's coming along as a cornerback. What's the difference between those two statements? Very similar in yeah. terms of defense, but one person they were very adamant about saying that this guy we got to have him on the field on special teams. We have yeah, to. Yeah, and, and and I'll take it a step further, going to another position. That's what a guy, two or three guys, told me about Armstrong. Yes. Uh, they, they say Nate, he does. 60 to 65 snaps in the game. Mm. He ain't talking about just defense. He yep. said, Nate, he, he, he does all of the special teams, yeah. and he does his rotation within the defense. Yeah. He said, we, we had to pay him. There's yep. no way we can let him walk away. He said, a lot of people may not like him as a starter defense event, but when a guy give us 65 snaps, special teams and defense, yep. I mean, 65%, we got a pan. Yep. Six four, so six four, two hundred fifty five pounds. He's he's on every special team. He's on punt return. Yeah. He's on punt. He's on kickoff return. He's on everything. And he's a, he's a core guy. And that's when you let, hear let those. Let me ask you this, right? There, yeah. Was you like that? Was you was you like that when you played? Yeah, they put me everywhere, Nate. <laughs> 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 they put me everywhere. Hey, I was do 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 the Twitter world and the and the, and the, and the Instagram and the Dub Nation. Do they know that your nickname is Zeus? Oh Lord, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I was all over the place, Nate. When you look up my stats, I really don't have a lot of stats because I didn't play a ton of offense, right. but I did a ton of special teams. 
a ton of special right. teams, and I was considered a core guy, man. So I understand the value of that. And you have to be a very selfless right. player in order to do that. And it's awesome when your organization values you and affirms you by giving you that contract like Dorrance got. Right. Right. Uh, before we flip to the other side of the ball, Nate Dog, give everybody an update. Yeah. Where, where you at right now? You're, you're driving. You're on the road. No, what? no, I stopped. I, yeah, I stopped. I, like I'm outside of uh, I'm outside of uh, about about 25, 30 miles, of maybe 50 east of uh, El Paso. Okay. You know, heading towards that. We're heading towards Fort Worth, and I wanted to stop and pull over to make sure that I show gets the honor and the glory that it deserves. <laughs> now, are you, now the word on the street, Nate, is that you'll get up and you'll drive to, to Bangkok in a minute, man. If it, if it has a road, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's not a road that Nate Dog hasn't really traveled much. What what kind of sparked <laughs> your love, man, for just getting up and hopping in the truck and going, especially with these gas prices? I, well, the thing is, I, I went to uh, Rosita, Mexico. Okay. I got a friend down there, and I went and saw him twice, and then I, I went, uh, then I went out to uh, where else did I go? Then uh, mm, I went to Florida okay. uh, three times to see my family. I'm always going to Florida. Yeah, that ain't but a 15 hour jump, bro. I get it. I man, I, I boy, I do that right there. I, I did that like five times. This 15 past hours. Off season, I went to Florida. Well, I put like right here. I got a Sprinter van. Okay. I've had for like six months. Let me let me let me look at it. I got a Sprinter van. I've had for six months, and it's got twenty seven thousand nine hundred ninety six miles. Jesus. Yeah, man. I wish I could drive to Bangkok. After they <laughs> tell it's pretty over there. I know. I yeah, want to go. We might have to go, go to certain places. We might have to go, Nate. Yeah. Right? We could do like. But I'll be driving out to Irving next week. I'll be going back out to Cali next week. You're driving out to Irvine, so huh? Could, yeah, I'm driving out to Irvine because. You ain't gonna be there on the seventeenth. I'm gonna be there on the seventeenth. Yeah, I, yeah. I want to see what these. I want to see what these charges gonna bring to the table with them two nights these outside linebackers. I might try to change my flight, Nate, because I don't want to miss that first practice. I, I'm not gonna miss it, bro. I, I, you know, I, if I gotta drive, uh, I'm gonna leave out on the fifteenth, and I'm gonna get there early on the sixteenth. Get in the hotel room, you know, just kick back there, you know, wait on you to come in there, zoo. I mean, you feel better <laughs> than anybody in the world, bro. I mean, you, we should line you up out there, man. Nah, we ain't gonna do that, man. <laughs> but, <laughs> but man, let's let's hop to this offensive side of the ball, Nate. Dog, Dak, Dakota Prescott, number four QB one, forty million dollar a year man for the Dallas Cowboys. What is the state of Dak coming off of now? A healthy off season. Uh, he's not coming in with any injuries. There's no, there's no peck. There's no shoulder. There's no ankle. None of that is apparent. How are you feeling? How should Cowboys Nation uh, feel about Dak Prescott going into this season? After we did uh, our live show of live practice uh, this past week, I like it that he took off his instinctively and ran. Mm. I ain't too much about those read options and all this where they, they say, hey, you got to run. Mm -hmm. I ain't always about that. But I am about when he instinctively t take off and run when it's third and four. Yeah. And, and the C open up. I, when he instinctively run, uh, get in the red zone, uh, get down there on the five-yard line, and he instinctively run, I love that. Okay. I love that. And me and you both agree. Yes. He is not a drop-back quarterback. Ooh, he is so a play-action pass. Roll out, waggle, boot type guy. Oh man, I don't think they like that, Nate. I don't think the people like that. Mm, they, they don't like. They, they, they ain't gotta like it. I'm yeah. trying to win some games for them. <laughs> he said, "Let me tell you something, huh? <laughs> let me yeah, tell you yeah, something." Yeah, uh, you know, Zay, look at him. Yeah, and I, you know, even though I show, like, let me tell you something. I try not to do that because my wife like. Is you going to always be saying, let me tell you something? <laughs> I'll be telling my wife, baby, let me tell you something. You know, <laughs> oh, my friends, everybody. So, but let me tell you something. Yeah. I'm trying to win some games with Dak. Okay. I'm trying to get you the Dak that we saw in his first two and a half years. The Dak that would do anything to win the game. Yeah. You know, and I know money makes a difference. And I know the vulnerability as you get older gets higher and higher. The percentages get higher. But if you don't be who you are, then you become less of a player. And right. what we saw last year, I don't care if he throw the ball six times, what we saw last year was not the, the Dakota rain that we need to see raining on this league. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I agree with you, Nate. And I know one of the things I've always been very adamant about in my uh, analysis of Dak Prescott has always been in regards to his velocity. And I don't believe that he's had the greatest of velocity over his career. I'm sorry people right. argue with me over it, and that's perfectly fine. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. But I kind of know this game a little bit, and I think that's one area that he – took upon himself to address this offseason. And we are able to see last week, he has a little bit more pop on his ball. His, his ball is actually carrying through the receiver instead of dying out at the end. So, And I know he, yeah. he took on a personal trainer this past offseason to really work on his strength and his power and his quickness and, and, and obviously his his body um, over this over this past season in preparation right. uh, for this upcoming year. And obviously, he must have thought that his velocity was low too because he worked on it. And you're hearing guys like uh, Dalton Schultz talk about how the ball's coming with so much zip and popping. You know, it has coming, it's coming so fast now, you know, and these guys are right, having to right. adjust. Those aren't things that just happen. Those aren't just, just you just, it's not something that you just fall into. You don't just fall into more velocity. It's something that's an asserted effort. You identify it, you watch the film, you say, ah, that's the area I need to improve upon. And I think that he did just that. So, Cowboys right. Nation, I was not tripping. All right, and the boy needed to improve his velocity. <laughs> <laughs> he went out there and he I did. He took you a long time to get that drill. Yeah, I had to back step on the back, but I hope your arms didn't grow much yeah. longer. <laughs> I had to let him know. I had to let him know. <laughs> but Nate, dog, this is the part that I know that you were waiting to get to in this show. Will Dak have time to throw the ball? And that leads back to what we got into as the show opened up. Our defense. Every the first five to ten minutes of practice, when the offense and defense come together, the defense rules. You notice that they've been ruling. They, I mean, with a, some type of blitz, uh, one uh, defense lineman breaking free, uh, linebacker running through. Mm. No line, no Zeke included. Nobody's blocked Parsons when he's got in the A gap yeah. or the B gap. No, even when he gets right around, nobody has blocked him yet. I mean, slowed him down. So Dak don't have to step to the left, step to the right, uh, uh, roll out. You know, nobody's blocked him yet. Mm. So, and, and and my boy, my right tackle still is, is struggling. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, he's struggling. When it came to DeMarcus Lawrence, when it comes to number 11, Parsons, he's been struggling. I thought you now, just, I thought you just said he's not a – Yeah, I'm about nowhere. to say, I thought you said he's just not a good practice player, Nate. You're about to make everybody paranoid. You say he's no, struggling. No, 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 he's not a good practice player. But this is one thing I knew. I could never block Charles Haley, and I could never block Leon Lett. Okay. But when the game started, it was so much easier to block those other guys. Okay. You're not facing a, a Michael Parsons in the game. You know, okay. now you may see something similar to that, you know, against Denver a little bit and against the Chargers, but you're not blocking that type of guy, not in every game. Not every you know, game, so. Nate, but there are some teams that Dallas is going to be playing to kick off the year, and there just happens to I be know, one. I know. Stop, stop. Let I'm, me I'm break just saying, Nate, no, 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 Nate, you, you. Nate, you threw it out there. You know I got to back it up. <laughs> We're talking about the offensive line and their ability to protect Dak Prescott and their ability to create holes for TP, Tony Pollard, and Ezekiel Elliott. Right. The first team – on the docket during the regular season happens to be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers yes. have who in the middle, Nate? Yeah, yeah, they got the big – I can't – you know what, man? Vita this dude Vea. is so big and so mean. That's your home, boy. You love that's you dub. That's, that's you dub. Yeah. That's you dub. That's my family. Uh, that, dude is, that dude is a man. From what you've seen at camp, Nate, because I have my own thoughts on the interior offensive line right now. Obviously, Zach Martin, we he's a lot. He's a, he's a, well, thank a you. Thank you kindly. Thank you kindly. Tyler Biotis is struggling from what I've seen. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah, I agree. We need a center. Whew. And we need to decide who our left guard is. And I'm hoping this week this kid either pull up his bootstraps and go head on. I'm talking about Smith. Go ahead on and take this left guard position. Tyler Smith, the draft pick. Yeah, or they let McGovern have it. So, so our center and our left tackle will know who they are working with, because the inconsistency of these guys playing across the front. A lot of times, you don't have to be the best blocker. Okay. But if you got guys working in concert, you can you can do, you can help with a lot of things. You can't stop everything mm -hmm. because our center is going to struggle. 
and that's going to be every game because the NFC East has got one and three techniques at, at, at every team has one and three techniques in this league. And I'm talking about the NFC East. Yeah. So our son is going to struggle. So we need to get situated, get our, get our, you know, like I get some, you know, put some rocks in our pocket, do some more squats, whatever you got to do. So we can get consistent on offensive line. The only, we've been very, very, very inconsistent in offensive line play. And we don't have a lot of time. I don't care what the scout or the coaches say. Certain positions, you don't have a lot of time because you just gave a dude $40 million who don't need to be harassed early and often during the season. He needs to find some type of rhythm for these young wide receivers. And I agree with you, Nate, but the, the question is, can they protect them? Can we won't know it too. Is the offensive be, line we'll, are they going to be able to move these guys off the ball, Nate? That's my question. And I, and I and I think about Tampa Bay, but I think about Cincinnati. I think about Philadelphia freaking Eagles. I hate to talk about it, but right. that's the reality. They have an absolute dog who's going to be a Hall of Famer, right? right. They right. Have, they have a guy in there that's going to be a Hall of Famer. Um, right. Yeah, I'm, what I just why would I just blank out on this dog on name? Um, Fletcher Cox. Fletcher Cox is going to be a Hall of Fletcher Famer. Cox, yeah. He plays in there in the inside and playing in that, that one technique. Well, and then they went out there and they drafted another version of Fletcher Cox and Jordan Davis. When you, What can you wow. expect based upon what you've seen so far from this offensive line, and the inter, especially interiorly, what can the Dallas Cowboys expect to do against a defensive front such as that that you're going to face at least twice this year? I'm a schemer. This is where – That's 700 pounds, Nate. Coach. That's 700 pounds, I, Nate. I understand. But this is where you quick traps, uh, getting outside. That's where your tight end has to be effective because you want to get outside. You want to make these dudes run. You want to – either you want to trap them. You know, a wham them with the, with the H-back, a wham them with the tight end. You got to have these dudes kind of guess the way where the hit is coming from. If you just try to line up, and just zone run inside and out. These dudes ain't having it, man. Especially <laughs> anything inside, they ain't having it. So, so, so let, they, let, they let me, win. Let me get this straight, Nate. So you're saying that you would like to bring a Dalton Schultz, Jake Ferguson, Sean McEwen, and bring them in and, and try to have a crackback block on Vita Vea, Jordan yes. Davis, Fletcher Cox? Yes. Yes, and a lot of times they, it ain't – how hard you hit them is just make sure that when when you hit them, they don't knock you back into the running back or <laughs> knock you back into the backfield. Sounds like sounds like a sacrifice. Your block. Sounds like a sacrifice, Nate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but well, they have to sacrifice. We just gave our tight end a franchise tag of ten, eleven, twelve million dollars. He can make a sacrifice two or three times a game. Yeah, I agree. They are gonna have to figure that out. And then speaking about yeah. speaking about the tight ends. Dalton Schultz and Sean McEwen have been the only ones that have been consistent out there. Jake Ferguson, the draft pick, and Jeremy Sprinkle have both been out of practice. And I know that's an area of concern from my stand simply because Jake Ferguson was supposed to have been the guy that's coming in and being the physical tight end so that Dalton could get out and run around. He hasn't put on pads and touched anybody this camp, Nate. You know, it's been very disappointing for me. Because me and you went at it during the OTAs. I'm like, that's my boy. That's my first round pick. And you're like, we shouldn't have drafted. <laughs> not that <laughs> high. At least. Not that high. When you didn't say we shouldn't have drafted. It's just not that high. Yeah. You know, you felt there's other guys we could have got. Yep. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking that once this kid get healthy, if he get healthy because it's a hamstring. Yeah. I think he could be. I think he could be an asset because he don't mind mixing it up. That's what he told me. Big I don't mind mixing it up. You know, but you can't be having hammies like you know. You can't be having hammies this early in training camp. Yeah. You never recover. Yeah, sucks. Y- that's gonna be a nagging thing all year. And we're talking about the fourth round pick for the Dallas Cowboys, Jake Ferguson, the tight end out of Wisconsin, and his ability to come in and have an impact at um, because they're running a lot of two tight end sets. We've been seeing that a lot in camp. Yes. And yes. You know, Sean McKeel. What you call that? Twelve. Twelve, 12 personnel. Uh, yep. Twelve personnel. 12 pack, yeah. Yep. So you got yeah. one one tailback, two tight ends. They're running a lot of that. And that really transitions into the receiver room because they're not always going to have three receivers out there if they're doing a lot of 12 personnel. 
Right. That means that you're only going to have two guys out there, and that seemingly right now is C.D. Lamb and Jalen Tolbert? Yes, uh, C.D. Lamb and uh, Houston. I'm sorry, what was that? Houston? Houston, yes, number three, the guy that you kept talking about and I kept ignoring. I saw him go against our whoa, took his video post off. You know, I saw him go against Diggs, and I'm like, whoa, maybe it's something to this kid. So, so the top three healthy receivers right now for the Dallas Cowboys are C.D. Lamb, mm-hmm. Noah Brown, yes, sir, Jalen Tolbert, yes. C.D. Lamb, how's yes. he looking? Huh? How do you feel C.D. is looking? C.D., we we I talked to him the other day, you know, and uh, he said, "Big Nuno, I'm ready." Uh, I'm not going to say I'm a number one, but I embrace the challenge mm. and, and we'll just let the season play out. And at the end of the year, you know, everybody have their opinion, good, bad, or different. He told me just like that. He mm. said he embracing it, but he's going to let it play out, you know, because he don't even know what to expect. That's the one. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, so he said he accepting the challenge, man. That's what he told me. All right, and Noah, Noah Brown's looking really good. He's lost weight. You know, it's indicative of them expecting him to run more routes and be a lot more involved right, in the right. passing game. He is catching everything that comes his way. He's getting open. He's creating separation at the top of routes. I'm liking what I'm seeing out of Noah Brown. I'm not sure how much he'll be a contributor on special teams if he keeps showing up at the receiver position like that. And then, you know. He's going to have to do it, man. He's going to do it. Yeah. He gonna have to do it because you don't want to lose him once – the other guys get healthy if they get healthy at all. You talking about you James know, Gallup Washington and, 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 Gallup. and Gallup and Washington in two months. They talking about he'll be back in two months. So Sheesh. you know you don't want to lose him. So he he's still gonna be that core special teams guy. Mm-hmm. So they just hoping the, one of these other two young guys can come come to light. And Tober looked good. I like him. He obviously he needs a preseason to get some reps, some live reps. But he's smooth, man. He's smooth as as yeah, a baby's like body. That? Yeah, I like that. He got he got hands that are like suction cups. His routes are smooth. He's in and out of his breaks. Nothing is is jittery about any of his motions, man. So I'm I'm looking right. forward to seeing him. I don't think he's a down the field guy. I do think he's a <laughs> possession right. guy, even though he is tall and he's lanky and he can run a little bit. I don't think that he that he that's not the strength of his game, at least not at this point. I think he's gonna be a more right. move, move the chains type of guy. But this Dennis right. Houston cap, man, and people should they, they need to watch out for number three this weekend. Watch out for number yeah. three, Dennis Houston. Uh, he is a free agent, right? Free agent uh, this right. part, this year. Right. And he is right. making some noise in camp. And for somebody to come in and receive, I know in particular there's a play, that two plays that comes to mind. They're running a two-minute drill, and he was with the ones, first of all. Undrafted right. guy running with the ones out of Western Illinois, 6'1", 198 pounds. And all of a sudden, he's lining up against Trayvon Diggs. And then, you know, of course, mm-hmm. your first thought process is, oh, Diggs is about to, about to finish this cat. And this dude right. went back-to-back plays, running slant routes on Diggs and caught them both moving the chains in a two-minute drill. And not only was he running routes and getting open on Diggs, but Dak was going to him. That was his go-to. Yeah. That was his first read, and Dak was delivering the ball right. to him. That means a ton. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And see, the thing about it, T.J. Vasher has had a nice camp, but we ain't even talking about this kid. Yeah. You know, because he ended up with the second team, Cooper Rush, and that's where he's making his head at. You know, so, you know, it's Tolbert, it's Houston, and then it's your boy Turpentine, which you don't know whether you're going to believe he's going to make it or not. I mean, I don't know why you keep switching in and out on the Turpentine kid. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't think. I think as as dominant as he as he can be on special teams, if he doesn't show mm. up at at the actual receiver position, I don't think that you can justify keeping him. I just don't. Right, not right. with a not with a team that's this loaded defensively. Right. Right. It's gonna wow. it's, it's gonna become a numbers game. So if he, if he can make some contributions and make some plays in in the regular uh, in the preseason games at receiver, then he he has a roster spot, sure sure thing, because Bones Foster right. already came out and pretty much all but said he has a spot. But he has to show up on offense. He has to be a reliable right. resource for them because that will force them to carry six receivers. Cool. Wow. Yeah. So that's wow. tough. And the only position we haven't talked about, Nate Dog, is running backs. Will the Dallas Cowboys return to having a running game? Yes or no? Yes, they will. It won't be very successful until our offensive line mature and get some consistency. Mm. But, yes, they will. If they don't run the ball, 
there will not be any success. I promise you that. Okay. I promise you that. All right. Was was last year's inconsistencies with Zeke due to failure up front at the offensive line position? Was it due to he's getting older and he's falling off, or was it due to his injuries? It was due to his injury and the and the lack of play the the lack of play of your offensive line and the lack of ability for the for the offensive coordinator, O line, O line coach, and running back coach to scheme up things to make it better not only for Zeke but to make it better for uh, Tony Pollard. Mm. TP, what, what what do you expect to see out of TP this year? You call him a, you call him the kid creator. I'm backing that up. <laughs> get him out high, get him, get him in the passes. You ain't got to be taking him deep downfield. Yep, get yep. him across the middle. Some get him some running back options. You know what I'm saying? We come up the middle of the field. Yep. Go right or left. You know, once he cleared the line. And get him the ball real quick. Ain't nobody going to stay with the kid. Yeah. Don't line this dude up at receiver. Let him come out the backfield. You would take away all his abilities if you think that he's going to go out there and all of a sudden become a Debo Samuels. Don't do it. Let the man be a running back, come out the backfield, run some option routes on okay. some linebackers. If you need to motion him out, motion him out and run him on some short stuff. But don't start sending this dude on on all kinds of the entire route tree and expect him to be out there making plays left hey, and right. Smarter, yeah. You don't have to turn into the smartest guy in the world with yeah. this situation. You got, you got found the biggest deal, the biggest question mark. Can our offensive line give these guys a crease to run into, or give give our quarterback that two point eight seconds that he need to get rid of the ball? Mm. Okay. All right. Well, Nate, before we before we let you go and get back on the road, I need a prediction. Before the preseason begins, I will we'll do, we'll do it again after the preseason. But before right. the preseason begins, what is your prediction for the Cowboys' seventeen game season this year? I mean, you know, I'll, Isaiah, you know what I'm gonna say, so don't <laughs> don't ask me that, all right? Because I can always find a way for the Cowboys to win. Uh-huh. So don't ask me that, okay? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You already know what I'm gonna say. <laughs> you already know, so don't even do it. So what's your prediction? No, we go we gonna postpone it then. We'll postpone it to <laughs> we'll postpone it to, to after the preseason. So we're not giving y'all too many okay. numbers to look at. Okay. Man, hey, All right. Nate, I want you to have a safe drive, man. I look forward to seeing you back. Uh I know I'll be heading out to, to Denver uh to go check those guys out. I'll report back to you and then we'll be okay. back together again uh to go see what them boys are gonna do against Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack. Oh my. All right, my friend. All right, hey. Yeah, we'll go. That's another episode. Let me tell y'all something. We'll see y'all next time. Hey, 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 let me tell you something, Isaiah. What's (laughs) What's up, Zeus? What's up? (laughs) We gone. We'll see y'all next time. (laughs)